You are now tuned in to the Windy City Benders Podcast. This is WCBP. All right, it's another edition of the WCB Podcast. It's Jerem, it's Tanner. What's up, bud? Not much, man. What's going on? Not much. Uh, we took the week off from recording last week, thinking, oh, maybe we'll build up to a little bit more to talk about. And uh, boy, were we wrong. Well, at least in hot stuff. <laughs> um, just a couple things to talk about, uh, given our Chicago Blackhawks in their very little momentum or movement of an offseason. Um, NHL talk, we got a decent amount to talk about. Some very interesting trades, some interesting signings, uh, surprising news in the Jersey world. Um, yeah. But, Pestle yeah. Watch is still on. Pestle Watch is still on and still waiting for that Chicago Blackhawk. I, every time the Blackhawks tweet, something and somebody in a group chat sends a link i'm like oh here it is and then you know like the like how the hawks like to like uh do like little tweets like teasers like they'll tweet out like eyeball emoji or something yeah you'll know the hawks when they when they get kessel it'll just be hot dog emoji and then it's that would be pandemonium oh my god that'd be amazing <laughs> announce the deal <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So let's uh let's get into it with some hawks talk. Uh the main thing that kind of really we want to touch on a little bit was a very surprise. I was very surprised that this interview happened. Um, Jonathan Tave sat down with Laz, um, did an athletic little interview article, uh, and he was just very blunt and honest and pretty much pointed to all signs that Tate has checked out. He, he's, yeah. he's just done with this team. Um, a couple quick He's little been done like, since 2020. So yeah, here's a quick couple quick things that he said that I kind of stood out to me. Um, at the end of the day, we're talking about a five plus year process process according to Kyle Davidson. Uh, so that part of it doesn't sound appealing to me at all. I can't speak for Kaner, but I definitely feel that the amount of turnover our team has gone through every single year, these last three or four years, that's where it really, really or it gets really, really draining and exhausting. You have a guy like Alex Brinkett who was under Kaner's wing. And I like to think that Kirby and I bonded in the same way too. And they go out, out the door over and over. You see, we've seen these turnover. Uh, I'm learning to be more patient, but there's no doubt that the timeline is pretty daunting and pretty exhausting to think about. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm going to do what, what I'm going to do and what the future holds for me, because I really don't know. Um, few things that I that for me kind of stood out with that was one that's the first kind of like time frame we've heard about like what the Hawks are thinking about for this rebuild and Kyle Davidson you know said always said oh well whether it's three years four years five years whatever we're gonna do it right and it still kind of had that question we kind of left that question with us wondering like okay well what is the time frame so we kind of kind of kind of know what to expect so we're not sitting here like this off season. We knew it was just straight sell. We're not going to grab anybody. Could we see new guys coming in next year that could potentially be a part? Is that two years away and all that? A five plus year rebuild kind of sets the table for expectations a little bit, which I mean could change on a dime. You know, we get that first overall pick. Who knows? Yeah, how much that that's, changes. I think that's why there's no like for sure timetable though, because yeah. you never know. Like, let's say we do get first overall next year, but and we snag Bar- or Bedard and maybe he is everything that he's supposed to be. Once he makes it to the show, maybe it takes him a year or two. And in those years, we still get like a top five pick. Let's say that could be just a few years waiting. We got to, I mean, there's also all sorts of signings and trades that can happen. So you never know, like if things go according to plan and all the prospects pan out, like the guys that we got in the first round this year, like, let's say we see them in three years, four years and they're like ready to go. Like, like, top two lines or whatever like we could be competitive at that point but it really depends on the future you're like you can't just be like yeah like everybody's gonna be fine in three four, three yeah. to five years then we'll be we'll be competing for a cop it's like you really can't bank on that yeah and i guess i guess for me more so oh, what i was saying isn't like okay well this is x amount of time it's kind of like yeah there's a lot of factors into it I was just more curious about always curious about what they saw as like, was there a time where they would be ready to be like, okay, within three years, we're going to start spending a little bit, start bringing guys in. Like that's, that's the one thing. Like I understand the whole, like developing our own prospects and all that, that takes a lot more time than 
just going out, signing a blank check and be like, Hey, here you go. Phil Kessel, yeah, the Blackhawks. Like, like you can't, you can't just expect them to just start throwing money around yeah. once we have like a few pieces, because like you want your, you want it to be like how the Hawks were. Like you want to build a core that you'll have for the next 10 plus years that can be competitive and remain competitive. And you can just fill in the pieces around them. You don't want to just be like, okay, we got, we got a couple guys. Now let's just throw it all out like together. Like you want to have the, the goalie that you're going to have for the future. That's solid. You're going to want to have your top two defensemen, like hopefully one and two like we were lucky enough when we got, we got, we got Seabrook and Keith and then things fall together where you get like your top first line center and you can fill in those pieces around them. Like, those are the those are the biggest like parts. Is like down the middle, top two defensemen who can eat those minutes and play every position or every situation, and then the goalie that can just be counted on in any situation. Yeah, but and, we don't have any of that right now. Right. So yeah. It's just, it like, is, that's why it's like you can't really be like oh, like five years from now. Like, but I'm no, sure they're not expecting to be like Buffalo, who's been in year fifteen of the rebuild. Arizona, yeah. Detroit. Detroit's finally. I think they're coming out of it, but still Detroit's been in it for a while. And it's like, people keep comparing it to like, Oh, the Rangers, you know, the quick rebuild and all in LA, their quick rebuild. But it's like, we don't have the pieces that the Rangers have. We don't have the pieces that LA had the, no. those young guys coming in and people forget too, because you know, a lot of the fan base and I I've given up sick calling them this, but I, I got to bring it up now. Like the bandwagon era fans, who yeah. are now experiencing this for the first time. This is what it was like before 2000, before 2008, before that conference final run. Like this was dog shit hockey in Chicago. We were, we didn't have the right pieces. We were drafting and grabbing the Duncan Keat, the Seabrooks, the Packard Sharp, the Kane, the Taves, Jalmerson, all those guys, Corey Crawford. And it took them a couple of years to build and develop them uh, in our system. That's with the exception of Kane and Taves, obviously. Yeah. But it's, I mean, this is literally what, what early 2000s Blackhawks hockey was. It was, you're going to be signing a bunch of misfit guys that are looking, are just going to get one year deals that you can maybe bring in, you know, trade at the trade deadline to get some draft picks for them. And you're just going to have an essential, it's going to be a revolving door of players coming in and out until our prospects, we have the prospects that we feel are going to be that next core and we're ready to build around. Yeah. And I think like, since this is Kyle Davidson's first year, it's like, it's his mark now. Like this was his draft. So like, this is where he starts. And like, I think that's part of the reason of like making all those trades is like you, you need to put your mark on the team. And or like put your mark on the organization and start it up in your way. You don't want to just keep carrying over everything that from the last person. And like as much as it sucks, like he kind of is kickstarting the rebuild a little bit with the pieces that he had. And everybody's always like, oh, I don't know what he was doing. But I mean, we can be mediocre and not get top picks with keeping to bring it in dock and everything. Or we can just fucking rock and roll right away. Yeah. And it, it sucks. And like, it, I think that they said it before, but it's kind of like we, he knows that like, this is going to cause that like Kane and Taves to want to get a trade, but like, there's no, like by the time we're good again, like we're not going to have Kane and Taves, like ask for a trade. We'll get pieces and that will accelerate our rebuild even more. Like, See, we're not while, just hold, like it's, it, it sucks, but whatever. Yeah. While I've kind of, you know, with the moves that he made on draft day, you know, the Kirby doc, to flip Kirby and then bring in the Nazar. Love yeah. that. Absolutely great. Yeah. Players been said that he's got the high ceiling in the draft. Awesome. Let's go. I might grow to love. I always forget who what's what was the name of the guy that we drafted with the Kirby or the to bring it seventh overall. Korchinski. Yeah. Might grow to love him. He might be a great player. I still don't like the, the return. Um, oh the yeah the trade i go that one i think is always going to have a bad taste taste in your mouth and i just think that's always going to be the one where it's like it's like yeah we could have been you know if we just kept to brink it and to brink it was the only guy we kept i mean there's would there really been that much of a difference versus you know that's the, i mean that's the one thing too and it's like if you can keep him and convince him be like listen stick with us 
deal with this for a couple of years. But if no, you want, we are going to be, build have this. the best chance of getting the highest picks possible. Like the Brinkett's going to be the guy that might put a hat trick in a game and, or like put up five points in a game. Well, it's like you win five to four and it's he, just like, okay, one guy. Like, yeah, that's fine. You still have Kane. <laughs> that's what I'm saying that's though. A, What's the difference? That's the other thing though. That's the thing though, too. Like, if you have Kane and Debrinket, you have a chance of winning like almost every game still. It doesn't matter who else you put out there. So you get rid of Debrinket because he has no protection, like no trade clause or anything like that. And then that's gonna cause Kane to want to leave. And you go, that's okay. We can get a ton of picks for you. And then now you accelerate the rebuild. I disagree. I can see I disagree with that because we came to Brinket this last year. Yeah. And, and we won we, we a good amount of games still in overtime because of Kane to the Brinket. Yeah, it's still not. The, we still had a top ten pick. We was still uh, would have had a third over. What was it third overall? No, what? six overall. No, sorry, six. Sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking. About I was the, like, if we would have had top three. Yeah, but no, but like still a top a top ten pick. Our team fell to a top ten pick with an opportunity to still move up. I yeah, see, but we I, want we want number one this year. We want number one. We want the best pick. I don't know. I think if you would have, I, I still, I don't know. I disagree. I, I still think that this team could have tanked and, and done horrible keeping to bring it. Yeah. I'm sure. And then we probably could have got a lot more for him at the, at the deadline and then really done some damage, uh, dropping in the standings. But I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. It's one of those things that Monday morning quarterback would have, could have, should have type of thing. And, it just will always be a sour taste in my mouth. I think the the Debrinket trade just because yeah. you look at because I mean, you look at what you got for what Kirby, who was, I mean, I I still think the Kirby Hall was better. To be honest, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah but Eagle that's the Hall, thing though. It's it's kind of like a gamble. Like Davidson's ma- basically gambling that Kirby isn't worth that, and mm-hmm. Montreal's gambling that Kirby is worth more than that, and like that's, that's where right. they settled, and. I mean, I I think it's going to be helpful for him definitely to have that change of scenery. Being in Montreal, I don't know. They're going to, if you, (laughs) they basically just replaced um, Kanyemi. Like, they're like, oh, we lost our third overall pick. So let's get somebody else's third overall pick center. And I don't know. Like, I hope he does well. Like, he was doing St. Louis is the, the, pretty decent defensively before, like, but he wasn't just putting up the numbers like pre injury. Yeah. Like, his, his trend, started taking a little bit of a hit so i think hopefully like that team is going young their main core is suzuki and and uh now they have slipkowski and they have caulfield and kirby and that's it's gonna be a fun team to watch it's but i don't know fingers they're, crossed they're missing a ton of pieces still fingers crossed kirby goes off this year because their competition for that first overall pick um yeah, I, um, and, sort of yeah Montreal, it, Carey Price decides to play and yeah, Montreal and plays well. the two teams I'm worried about, you know, with the first yeah. overall pick. It's crazy how Mon- I mean, just how Montreal went from Stanley Cup finals to losing their top sa- or top defenseman and top goalie and, and like that basically drove them to being in the basement besides like other injuries. They just got hot at it's the It's still just like man. wow. Yeah, yeah. Also, they weren't like they weren't a very good playoff like contender. I feel like they were the last. I don't even. I don't even remember what the what the the placement was on them. But if the divisions were regular, I'm sure they probably wouldn't even made the playoffs. No, they wouldn't. They were the they were like the 24th team in the in the league. I think. No, that that was the bubble year. That was when Dallas went to the finals. The oh, the year that they went to the finals was the the all Canadian division. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. And so, like, that's what I'm saying. Years, if the divisions were, if, if yeah, well, yeah, because it, it basically was the same year. Yeah, and that's why Tampa Bay is a fake dynasty because they were playing in fake fake hockey years. We went back to a regular season. Regular. Tampa we won. Tampa Bay won two shortened seasons in two weird div- like years. They finally play a full season. And then they play a full playoffs, make it all the way to the finals, and don't win. So they finished <laughs> – Montreal finished 18th. Yeah. In the regular season. There was – Would they have made the playoffs in the Eastern Conference, though? No. Yeah, same. 
because alone you know, the New York Rangers missed the playoffs that year and they had one more point than Montreal. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. See, the Rangers would have made it, but because it was only four teams per division making the playoffs instead of, you know, like top two and then whatever, or I don't even know what it is anymore. It's top three and then two wild card teams. It's stupid. And it's even hard because they don't, they don't break it down by conference because it was all mixed up. Yeah, they wouldn't, they definitely went out and made the playoffs. But that's funny. Yeah. So, but yeah. All right. So, my question here, kind of going with Taves. Now, I'm going to say this that for this era of Chicago Blackhawks, he's my favorite Blackhawk. He will always be my favorite Blackhawk from this era of Chicago Blackhawk hockey. And nothing is going to change that for me. But is he ruining his legacy a little bit by going on this depressed, mopey, like, I don't like what's I going mean, on tour? Or is it just kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely making it, like, <laughs> where I'm just like, yeah, leave, man. Fucking leave. <laughs> but if Kane leaves, I'm going to be like, that sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. It hurts to not see Kane play. But Kane's been playing fucking high-level hockey for the last few seasons still. And it's basically been like Taze hasn't is non-existent and i don't know man it's yeah, a he lot, was not a lot of the entire year put, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah exactly he did put a lot of miles on himself like throughout the early 2010s and everything like tons of hard minutes playing a lot more defensive hockey you know like that's gonna beat you down he was one of the best players in the nhl for a good span of time and then like he was he was never like a point per game player he came close a couple of times but it was because his game was more than just offensive. It was all over the place, but it really wore him down. And he was now like, when it came time, like we, these contracts have kicked in. Kaner's contract is so much more worth it. Oh yeah, so much more worth it. Like if I could, re- if you could revalue their contracts, Taves is probably like a six back at like a six million dollar player, like at best. Isn't it crazy too? Like when they first signed these contracts, I would have swore just by their personality and the kind of the way they were, the situations flipped. I thought Kane would be the one bitching and he would want to get out and Taze would want to be the lifer. And now Kane is the one who he wants to be a lifer because he wants Makita's records. Yeah. And Taze is like, get me, have. yeah, get me out of here right now, kind of thing. It's just, it's so well, weird how. I've mentioned it before, but Taze doesn't have anything to play for other than championships. Like he's not yeah. chasing any records. He's already played a thousand games as a Hawk. I don't think he's close to a thousand points. Um, Like there isn't really anything to look forward to for him where Kane has like those records that he can break and be like the greatest Black Hawk of all time. And I think like that kind of sets it apart. Like Taze just wants to go and win championships and that's fine. Cool. Yeah, Taze, Taze is 148 points away from a thousand. Yeah, and he's not going to fucking hit that. No. I think that he, if he can play the next two or three seasons, he might come close, but he, it's two or three seasons, and, like, I don't know if he has that in him. He only had 37 points this year. Like in, in, Did he play the whole season? He played 71 games. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I mean, it would, it would take him, like, another like, four to four years at least. And like, it's like, you know, that's not like, yeah. and we've said it before and people always get annoyed with this argument with it, but it's like, Hayes is not a point guy. He's that's not yeah. what makes him, what made him like the great, one of the greatest center centers in NHL history. Like he was a two way player who everything that he did is, does not show up on the stat sheet. And that's probably what hurts him the most when yeah. people talk about like, you know, some of the all time greats. Yeah. I mean, when you're, like a perennial Selkie nominee and you're captain of like a fucking dynasty. Like you're going to be looked at like pretty harshly if you're not putting up a point per game. Like it's yeah. yeah. When you have Sidney high- Crosby asking if it's okay to be the captain of when he's selected as like the team Canada that's captain, insane. just kind of like, Oh, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a no doubt hockey hall of famer. He is probably for his ballot. Like yeah. he's got oh, yeah. nothing, nothing to prove. He's Olympic gold medals. He's won at every level. He's I got think national he just champion. Really wants to win. Yeah. And like 
I mean, I don't think losing hockey is like fun for him. It's not fun for anybody, but at least Kaner fucking is exciting. <laughs> like, what's the point of playing like like very good sound defensive hockey if your team's still gonna lose four to one? Like, that's gotta just be annoying as fuck for him. Where Kaner's like, ah, we're down four to one. Maybe I'll try and get a hat trick right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> like he's still just gonna go off every once in a while. Four to one, like, give me two shifts. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. Like it, I just want to see Kaner as a hawk forever. I would love to see Taze as a hawk forever. Taze, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think Kaner is just gonna be like, if I went to New York, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think, honestly uh, would get a fucking Kaner like Rangers dude, jersey. I would love that. I just want to see Kaner doing the heartbreak, Sully with Panarin just high kicking in the background, like at the same time. <laughs> Oh man! If you want to see that so bad? Just play fucking NHL 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be hilarious because it's like you know Panarin is just gonna be like a kid on Christmas when if Kane gets traded over there, like he's gonna be so happy, so excited. I think the only yeah. thing that would make him happier is if Bobrovsky got traded to uh to New York with him too. That oh yeah, cool that'd, be a, I mean, that'd be so great. Um, he's got another comment too here, but I want to talk to something else too because it kind of we can use a transition for something else. But it's kind of fitting. I was just thinking about this as we we're talking about how Taze and Kane probably will not finish this season as a Black Hawk if they even started as a Black Hawk. But it's almost it's almost kind of fitting that this is the way that their their Black Hawks legacy ends with just this brutal like storyline and just like kind of being forced out because that's just that entire core from that team not a single person really got to to call it on their own terms and they really they don't get to really call their end of their blackhawks career on their own terms they're essentially i mean they do and they don't I mean, they do because yeah, it's up but to it's them like, if they want to play here or not but i'm like i'm almost really wondering like are do you think that they're going to offer them contracts? If they're still on this team past the trade deadline, do you really think they're going to try to offer them an extension? I don't think they're going to be on this team past the trade deadline. Well, I'm just saying, though, like, yeah. Like, if they, if they though, are, I, if I they're mean, somehow, they, I, I think that. Like, let's be honest. If, here, they, they, if they are on the team past the trade deadline, I think it's because Davidson is forced to keep them in order to sell tickets <laughs> and yeah. merchandise. Because if you don't have Kane and Taves, who for what, like five years in a row, they were literally number one and two in jersey sales in the entire nation. Yeah. Like if you don't have those two guys to like sell jerseys and sell tickets and market, I don't know. <laughs> with you with you're not a diehard fan, like who are you what who are you like marketing to as the casual fan? Like who? Yeah. I mean Mackenzie Entwistle's been in a couple of the, <laughs> the, oh, the social media posts. <laughs> It's good. Uh, I'm pretty okay. sure if any Chicagoan saw Mackenzie and Whistle on the street, they would just be like, "Who's the fucking child? Like, who's the who's the college kid walking around in Hawks here all the right? time?" Like, it's like back in the day when it's like they were talking about stories about like Keith or Sharp was selling like, "Oh yeah, we'd have to go to like downtown to the train station and try to give out free tickets to the game," and people would just walk right past us like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are you like? There's no hockey here or something like that." Yeah. Fucking silly. Um, so what Taves is happy about is the hiring of Luke Richardson as the new head coach. Um, he did say Luke's message is we're gonna work hard, we're gonna be prepared, we're gonna play as a team, and we're gonna go out there, try to win every single game. Um, I'm really excited to have a chance to play for Luke. So, I mean, he's excited for Luke, and that kind of has got to make you excited if if Debbie Downer, Jonathan Taves is excited for the head coach, like you got it. I mean, that's yeah. That's a good I mean, sign. He, I don't. I don't know if he's gonna come out and be like, "I'm not excited to play for this guy." Well, no, but like he he doesn't. I mean, he's been brutally honest about everything else. So it's like, I mean, he could have just said, "I ah, I got no opinion on it" or something, or "It is what it is" type of situ- response. Um, but I mean, it's just that's not the only like positive, positive like messages we've heard about Luke uh, Richardson. Uh, Max Dome came out and said too that when he heard that. Luke Richardson got the head coaching job. He called his agent and said, let's go, let's go to Chicago. Um, type of guy that he wants to play for. And it's, I mean, it's cool that these guys that he's already got this reputation of guys want to play for him. He's a player, like, yeah. he like he's a player's coach. And 
I mean, that's going to be key, especially if it pans out where he ends up being the guy that they give the keys to when, when they start to make the turn and, you know, if he can put out there that, you know, Hey, I'm a player's coach and guys love playing him when their situation shitty, when it's about to get good, that's going to be even better for us to bring, you know, bring in more guys. Absolutely. I'm excited to see because I I've never really followed Luke Richardson, Luke Richardson. So I'm just excited to see like what his coaching style is like. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be refreshing. I think every time it's like a new coach, it's refreshing, but like, yeah. like, I'm not like at this point, we're not expecting a lot to happen though. You know, like, so anything that's not just like, Oh, there's guys on the ice and we lost. Like if it, if it's like, they're playing much better defensively and like beating the shit out of teams, even though we're still losing cool. If it's a barn burner, every fucking time we're losing six to five, still whatever. If it's an exciting game, that's awesome too. I just like, right. don't want to get blown out every game and just like, look like there's not even an NHL team out there, you know? I kind of wonder uh, what, what would have been like, if this is when Carlton stepped up. I'm, I'm very curious to see that, like, what his – if it would have been a different situation. You know, no expectation, not trying to replace Q, all that kind of stuff. Like, I really wonder if if he would have had a chance here. But, well, well, I'm more excited right now. I mean, I'll be more excited to see – I don't know, I'm more excited. I'm just more curious to see if they – I don't know how I'm trying, what I'm trying to say here. If they're going to give him, like, the opportunity to see this through, or is he a placeholder in case, you know, and then, you know, like a, a trots becomes available again type of thing? Eh, I think – I don't think that they're just going to get rid of him. I think they're going to – it seems like they went through the process of trying to select a coach that they're going to go into the future with. I'm sure if it's a couple of years down the road or, like, something is just, like, extremely not working out, then they'll probably switch him out. But I think that they're going to give him free reign to just kind of go as like and do what do him, you know? Yeah. Like they already know that we're not expecting to win. He knows we're not expecting to win, but that's not going to keep him from doing his job. Great. All right. Uh, so let's wrap up Pots talk here. Um, you brought this up in our group chat and I thought it was great. So let's talk about it now. Um, what are you looking forward to this season? Like what, if anything, are you looking forward to? And I said, originally I responded in the group text that I'm looking forward to the draft lottery, like yeah. the end of the season, the draft lottery. And you guys kind of jumped on my throat about that, about, <laughs> and I will defend my, my response on that because I'm not, I am not looking forward to this season at all. I don't think it's going to be, Good hockey. I think if anything, we're gonna it's gonna be black hockey luck that we're gonna look when our win one too many games, it's gonna fuck us over for for the first overall pick type of thing. What I'm really excited about this rebuild, and I'm so excited about the rebuild. I'm more excited about the guys that we drafted this past season and seeing when they get involved. Like that yeah. is what I'm looking forward to. And like it's just it's hard to get excited for this year when it's very much of a like all right, go out there, play hockey, but don't do too good. Like, yeah. It's kind of hard to get into that. I think one of the fun things is for this season, that's not even going to really have to do anything with the Hawks, but with the team itself, like the NHL team, but I want to follow more of like the guys that we just drafted. Like you said, like I want to see what how they're doing. I think the last time I was like this excited for a prospect was literally Boquist and like <laughs> hearing all about like him and like Brian Campbell being in the London, um, London Knights as a special just advisor just to him, like, and it was just like, oh, that's like fucking awesome. Like this kid's gonna be the future. And then of course Bowman does his fucking Bowman thing. Um, I I'm excited for Luke right Re Lucas Reichel getting a full season. Yeah, I think that he's gonna be make a decent impact. I I'm excited to see like how much of an impact it's gonna be. And that, that's the other thing, too, is just, like, seeing what kind of players are stepping up. And, like, the Hawks kind of have this Hagel, like, form that they want to try and fit, like, players into. You know, like, yeah. that hardworking late rounder or, like, just 
almost like a third or fourth line guy that is playing like out of his mind, but like ends up, I don't know. I'm excited to see if there's somebody like that because it was kind of like a little bit of a rotation between like, fuck, who was it? Like Mike Hardman. Um, uh, what was Reese, Johnson. Uh, da, 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 da. Reese Johnson, Ryan Carpenter. Uh, even who did we trade to Vancouver? What was his name? Remember when we traded for Adam Gaudet? Uh, oh shit who was that let me find out let me find out um but like it's that kind of guy that you know is just going 110 percent every single time they it's literally the guy that we always love to like watch play because as soon as he's always noticeable on the ice um uh, matthew highmore matthew highmore yeah it's it's all of the, those types of players which i think is just really funny but like even speaking of that like there's a kid that the Hawks actually just signed that was a former seventh round pick um, from the Hawks who is a little bit of a surprise because so he was, it's this kid, uh, Jalen Lupin. Yeah. 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 So he was drafted in 2021 and he was playing on the Edmonton oil Kings. And I think it was like, um, yeah. So he, where the fuck is it? Whatever. His stats, at, like, his draft year, he put up 29 points in 23 games. So, I don't – I think he was an overage kid when he got drafted. Not, I think he was drafted at 19. But last year, he put up 64 points in 66 games. So, maybe we get – maybe he does a little – he does – like, that's the kind of kid that's going to end up playing in Rockford. And if – if he like is busting his ass because you know seventh round pick, there's nothing absolutely guaranteed at all. Right, that might be somebody we we can look out for in the future. Just being like a surprise, like hey, it wasn't even our pick either. It was a pick that we got from Florida for um, trading for Brett Connolly and Stillman yeah. and and uh, Bjorkstrom and all that shit. But I'm uh, I'm excited I'm, to also see the defenseman. Yeah, rotating in like a full year of Alex Vlasic. Um, also a full year of fuck, what was his, what's his name? The other young defenseman that we had. Regular, yeah, I'm, yeah Regula. I want to see him. I'm want I want to see what kind of trades they're gonna make because there's no way that we should keep McCabe and Murphy. Um, I hope uh, Ian Mitchell gets a little bit more playing time. I hope Nicholas yeah. Bowden gets a little bit of time. Yeah. And this Nolan Allen, just, too. I don't know if he'll – If he'll make an appearance this year or not. Yeah, but, I mean, he – he was a, a first-round pick, too, wasn't he? Like, a late – He was – yeah, he was but, He was the he was the pick that we got for – um The Seth Jones, right? Seth Jones trade, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm also very curious to I'm see – I'm assuming he'll probably play in the Rockford. AHL unless he's still going to be in and the he's W. He's 19. Yeah. So he might he's still, still be able to play. He, he can, no, he can still play in the WHL, but yeah. like, what, at what at what point are you just like too good for that, and you should be in the AHL? You know? Does he fall under that like weird thing where it's like, okay, well, you can't play either NHL so. or juniors. You can't go to the AHL because I think it's like you have to be twenty at some point to go into the to AHL. I don't know. It's like I hate that. It's so stupid. Like that's yeah. what that's what fucked Kirby. Like honestly. It's, it's it's that he has the the he has to go to the W. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see Kurishov because I feel like they kind of are building him around as like this top six guy. I think yeah. he's he's just gonna get the chance. Yeah, like I'm curious to see if he can take it and run with it. Um, Radish, how if he can like he really finished last year strong. Um, if he can really build off of that because I mean he, you're talking about the Hegel type player like. We essentially traded Hagel for Hagel right there. You know, can he develop into that? I mean, I'm very interested to see that too. Um, the one thing I'm just terrified and miserable about is the goalie situation. Like, I just, I, there's not nothing good could come from that. Yeah, I think it would be cool if, uh, what is it, Soderblom, if he got called up a bit and like maybe showed a little bit more progress of like. He might be able to 
like be the backup next year or something that would be cool yeah. like any kind of progress from like the young guys i would love to just i just like seeing like surprises you know like really good like it's i'm sure everybody else does but like the guy that comes out of nowhere like what was it josiah slavin came in last year and like was just kind of playing pretty solid and like there was a few other defensive prospects like that like came up like that Jakub galvis kid i was just i was surprised when he was playing like he played pretty goddamn solid defensively and i was just like great like that's that's cool like i'm sure the hawks won't fucking do anything with this but they're gonna definitely have some some openings on defense because i'm sure not everybody's gonna be staying healthy the whole year when you're playing so much fucking in your own zone right also i wonder if i wonder if davidson's gonna be able to trade seth jones ever no it just doesn't make sense to keep him but like i know it doesn't make sense to keep him but I don't know. If, if honestly, if he eats two million dollars on that contract, I'm sure plenty of teams want a seven point five. Seth Jones. Sorry about that. My dog somehow figured out to open the door. Yeah, that's funny. I saw his tail. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just think the only teams that would really be able to like eat his contract are the teams that are are in the same boat as the Hawks that are just trying to lose. So I just, I don't know. Uh, Bowman, Bowman, Bowman made that untradeable, I think. Nah, I don't think so. I think if if you can – this is going to sound stupid, but the Rangers. I've been seeing people saying that, like, they think Jacob Truba is a little too expensive. And – I think if you are able to maybe work out a deal where Seth Jones goes to New York and you eat a little bit of his contract. So like if we were to eat 1.5 of Seth Jones's contract, it equals Truba's at 8 million. So we would have Truba for 9.5 basically. And they would have Seth Jones for eight. I don't know if they would feel like that's worth it, but I don't, I keep seeing like Ranger fans thinking that they should get rid of Jacob Truba, but like I thought he was like extremely solid in the playoffs. Like he's a, a huge defensive force, dirty player, but I mean solid. Yeah, and like if that we made that trade, then we have Truba for four years rather than Seth Jones for eight, and I think that's much more palatable. <laughs> I just don't know how that makes but, sense. I don't know. Yeah, like what? Because also everybody talks about everybody. Like a, everybody talks about how Seth Jones isn't worth the nine point five. So are they really gonna take Seth Jones at eight million? That's like no. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't know. I just I I feel like that's not terrible. I'm just uh, who else? Who would who would take on <laughs> if if Edmonton didn't pay fucking Darnell Nurse nine point five? I'm sure they wouldn't mind having Seth Jones at nine point five. Uh, Columbus. I was about Tracy to say. Maxey. I'm gonna say Columbus <laughs> didn't sign. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. What's his name? Um, Wierenski or Good Branson? Yeah, uh, Good Branson for four million. You could have made a deal work a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, fucking Pittsburgh. <sighs> fucking send him to Montreal. These teams that have like no fucking cap space. <laughs> that even if we send ate a little Montreal, bit, man. That's what that would work. Send them to Montreal. <laughs> Montreal for Kirby. Get Kirby back. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, oh yeah, the Kraken. I was gonna say like what I was saying before, like send them to Seattle. They only have a million in cap space right now, though. After like the moves that they made this off season. I don't get what they're doing with their goalie situation either. Mm, I don't know. Who the fuck would fit? uh seth jones i don't i really i don't like i think we're fucking stuck i think (laughs) yeah unless we're eating like more than two million you have to eat like 50 percent, maybe in no way in hell am i eating 50 percent for eight years eight more years i hope like anaheim get good like just take on seth jones as well john klingberg seth jones on the right side with shattenkirk they have buffalo yeah, what, really? <laughs> Buffalo with Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin. Yo, <laughs> Yoka, how are you? Jesus. 
I'm sure Buffalo would fucking do it anyway, too. They paid Jeff Skinner $9 million. They'd probably just take on the whole deal. Would you trade Jeff Skinner for Seth Jones straight up? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe some other pieces. I know, but I mean, but like, yeah, like, I mean, no. They you don't take on, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't take Jeff Skinner on for five more years and $9 million. That's a Buffalo thing. That's going to stay there for at least like three more years before they can move them for 50% retained. I feel like every team has like an expensive defenseman that like they're not going to want like a 7.5 or on their fucking team. I think the situation changes in a couple of years when the cap changes, but also I think that's it's, makes it even harder to move him because who knows that, you know, if he's, starts declining around the same time that the cap goes up. Try and get Lou Lamoureux to spend some money. Send him to the island. Yeah. Speaking of that. Yeah. So uh, I think that's anything else? Yeah, I think that ends it for Hawks Talk. We'll uh, we'll jump right into that with the latest rumor is that Kadri is going to be signing with the New York Islanders, which I don't understand but okay it's, it's a thing yeah like sounds good i really I, think he was holding I, must colorado be. to make some space but i think colorado's like uh let's worry about mckinnon well i get yeah i guess it it would make sense like i thought brock nelson was playing strictly center but i guess he's also a left wing the team also is I, I like what are they gonna they can offer him like seven million they don't they don't pay anybody over seven million on the island so like he does have a like, yeah this? he does have the lou the lou connection yeah so he might be willing to do a little little deal for lou but you get barzell first line center cadre second line center you got anders lee brock nelson on the left side one and two i mean it makes right it makes Kyle island Paul Mary. Uh, Josh Bailey, you got uh, Oliver Wallstrom. I wonder how did he do last year? All right, 24 and 73. But that was his like, uh, no, his rookie season was a year ago. 45 points in 26 games. Yeah, I don't know. It, like, I always thought that the Islanders were going to be competitive last year, but they got so screwed with the way that their season went out. And then they got rid of Trots. So I don't expect anything out of them this year. No. I don't know, like, so a lot of these guys, man, honestly, unless you absolutely love the place that can, that's offering, like, you know, a long-term deal, yeah, I would sign a fucking two, two, three-year contract just to get yourself to that, to that cap once, once the cap goes up. Oh, yeah, I mean. I mean, I know certain guys, are guys you got to get paid situation. now. Yeah. But I mean, like, if you're one of those one of those guys where it's like, okay, let's make this nice little bridge deal here, like, you know, I'm not gonna get you know decline in skill in the next two three years. Let's sign a three year ticket. Let's go and get get a bigger payday. Yeah. We're just looking at fucking restricted free agents that haven't signed yet. Um, what if the Hawks just went out and uh, signed Kirby Doc? <laughs> God, that would be amazing. <laughs> Just completely fuck like, Montreal again with you, Montreal doesn't have cap space. But I'm just saying they that have, like every they have, less so, than, they, live, they have less than five hundred thousand in cap space. That should be a new tradition <laughs> in in the NHL offseason is that every team every team at least once has to offer sheet of Montreal Canadian. Yeah, like why not? It's that basically a fucking... it's a free player. Like if you if you <laughs> Let's say we pick what was the trade? We get we got Kirby Doc or we traded Kirby Doc for a first and a second. Is that what it was? Uh yeah. Yeah, a first and a third. Let's say we we sign Kirby for and third. and it's it's that it's that uh that value that it's like a second and a third or something like that. You traded a second and a third for a first and a third. Like, that's a pretty fucking great deal. 
Like, how fucking hilarious would that be? I'm, is, is there any rules against that? <laughs> I think so. Hey, let's get somebody get Kyle Davidson on the phone, please. <laughs> hey, can you go sign Kirby Doc? Go offer sheet him, please. There's nothing that they could fucking do. They'd have to like move, move they'd have to move something. This is yeah, this is that's some video game type shit that I'm gonna look into in a video game now. <laughs> like, hey, I'll trade you this guy for a first first rounder. All right, now you can't sign him. I'm gonna sign him. <laughs> I don't know. How worth it? Odinger How fucking worth it? Yet. Jake Ed- Edinger. Edinger, yeah. Yeah, because Dallas doesn't have all right. Like they have they space. Still, they have space, but they also have to sign Jason Robertson. Um, yeah. So like since we're talking about just free agencies now, like there's still some RFAs getting signed. There's guys going through arbitration right now. There's guys that are going into it but avoiding it. But like some big names like Mangiapane signed 5.8 in Calgary. Jesper Bratt signed 5.45 in Jersey. Uh Kyler Yamamoto 3.1. And then I don't know if you know much about Mario Ferraro, but I fucking love that guy. He's literally like, like Nicholas Yalmerson. He mm-hmm. all he does is is block shots. He's he's an insanely great like just defensive defenseman. What I, awesome name too? <laughs> yeah, dude, fucking <laughs> <laughs> Mario Ferraro. Yeah, it's like he. So that's exciting. Um, he, I think he got a, a decent deal for. For basically, I didn't even hear about him until last year. He got three point two five. So, oh my god! Uh, His rookie season, fifty eight block shots in sixty one games. Uh, second season in twenty twenty one season, uh, ninety six block shots in fifty six games. Last year in sixty three games, one hundred and fifty one block shots. Yeah, Jesus. Also, if you can see how many hits he has, too. He just lays the body as well. 140 hits last year, 155 the year before, 120 first year. Yeah, he just he throws the body and block shots. Like, what an awesome defenseman. (laughs) And And, very little uh, penalty minutes, too. I mean, 32-16. He's he's, he's on the penalty kill. Like, that's that's the guy that you want. And I'm just like, damn, I fucking wish we had him. I miss uh, who I miss else? else? <laughs> uh, in like non RFA, like John Klingberg, he signed in Anaheim, got that old uh, Taylor Hall deal. You know, like I'm gonna get that one year in Anaheim, I'm, I'm which is sure amazing. He said, I believe right. in this team, and then gets traded at the deadline when they're not actually right, right before he signed it too. He traded his longtime agent. Um, allegedly, he declined a eight years seven million dollar extension from dallas during the season um i think he dropped the bag a little bit or do you think his agent dropped the bag i mean uh unless he, unless I, he really what didn't did, want what to did, stay what in did you say what did you say man you said hey if i was any of these guys i'd sign like a one two year deal for the cap to go up and really bank it in yeah maybe that's so, what he's doing maybe that is what maybe. he's doing i just don't know because i don't really know how he felt about dallas like did he was there like oh did he want out of i mean he didn't have their trade request but was that because he didn't want or he didn't think he was gonna get paid i probably because he didn't think he was gonna get paid yeah or also dallas wasn't playing too hot i mean they made the playoffs like and the only reason they were they remained competitive in the playoffs is because of jake ettinger jesus who klingberg yeah yeah. Um I noticed uh so I'm just looking at guys that have signed and like the things that always kind of upset me is like a guy that signs in Pittsburgh, like Dan Heinen, who is is like a decent enough NHLer, but I'm sure he's gonna end up getting put on like Sidney Crosby's wing and then he's gonna score like fucking sixty plus points and you're just gonna be like, Where did Dan Heinen come from? <laughs> it's like yeah. eh. well he he was on Pittsburgh club. last year. He was on Pittsburgh last year. He put 33 points in 76 games, but I don't know. It's a, it, that's kind of shit where I'm just like, God damn it. That guy's going to always – it's the type of player that is like a nobody on any other team. And then when the Hawks play Pittsburgh, they put up a bunch of points because Crosby feeds them. And it's just like, yeah. God damn it, dude. Um, um, Uncle Kako, yeah. two-year, uh, 4.2 million with a 2.1 AAV. Interesting. I mean – 
And I wonder, yeah, if if that's what he's getting, you'd assume that's like kind of the baseline for Kirby Doc then. Because yeah. they were they were what one point away from each other? One yeah, one point separate. I think Kirby had one more point than him. Yeah. So he's gonna get two point two. Uh, <laughs> that Owen one point's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, Owen Tibbet re-signed two years, three million with a one point five AAV. Um technically it was a signing, but it was also involved a trade. Matthew Kachuk re-sign air quotes in Florida for nope. Oh no, it was a sign in Calgary. Trade. Yeah, it was a sign trade. I forgot about that. Yeah, eight year, uh, seventy six million dollars for a nine point five cap hit AV. Then gets flipped to Florida for I'll pull the total trade up again. Uh, Huberdeau. Jonathan Huberdo, Mackenzie Weger, Cole Sch- uh, Schwint. And a 2025 first round conditional pick. Um, it is lottery protected. Uh, Matthew Kachuk and a 2025 fourth round pick conditional uh, goes to Florida. Florida basically saying, fuck our first rounds. They do not have a first round pick until 2026 now. Yep. Um, the fourth round condition is if the 2025 first round pick that Florida sent to Calgary is a lottery pick resulted in Calgary receiving Florida's 2026 first round pick. Instead, the 2025th fourth round pick that Calgary sent to Florida slides to 2026. Yeah. God, I love conditional picks. I love that. Yeah, like, it's so funny. And I mean, it, what a crazy trade. I just what a, like, we were talking about it before, like what team is going to be able to fit that. And it's like, oh, okay, Florida just decided to get rid of, like, one of their best defensemen and their leading – their franchise-leading scorer. <laughs> yeah, when was – I think Steve Dangle tweeted out, is like, when was the last time 200-point guys were traded for each other? Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Like, it's – I just – it's this is one of those weird, weird trades where it's like, right now, it's so easy to be like, oh, Calgary won this trade. Mm-hmm. Just because of the return, but then it's like everybody, like you got to look that both uh, Huberto and Uyghur are both pending UFAs. Yeah, so they, they don't, don't resign. They don't, they don't have an extension. Plus, Huberto is like twenty nine, and yeah. Matthew Chuck's twenty three, twenty four years old. Twenty four, and it's just like okay, well, they just got. They basically are like, would you rather go long term with Huberto? Like, let's say he also got an eight year deal. You have him until he's like 36, 37, or you get eight years of Matthew Kuchuk and you have him until he's 32. Yeah. You have no, him in his I mean, entire prime. It's it's just I think Florida ends up winning this trade. Yeah. You tell um, him you're telling me like three years down the line, Florida yeah, oh yeah. this trade. You're gonna just, you're crazy. It's just one of those things that people are like right now, they're like, it's like those are the ones you take you screenshot tweets to like keep your receipts that are just like, yeah. Oh my God, Florida L Florida L I can't believe Florida's so dumb. Zito's drunk, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it's like, how, how short-sighted <laughs> like, the Sam funny- Bennett, Matthew Kachuk back together. Oof, what oh, a tandem. <laughs> <laughs> I Sam think- Bennett was just like, Oh fuck. Yeah, dude, you're going to love it here. <laughs> dude, the funny thing about the trade too, like not even the trade, they just Huberto the other day put out a video saying, Hey guys, um, excited to play for Calgary. You know, I picked my number for next year. It's going to be number 10 and all this. And people were like, oh, for next year, who were confirming not resigning in Calgary? Like he's just picking someone oh, for wow. one year. Like it's so, it was so yeah. funny that people saying that, but yeah, it, I think. You go from, I mean, Matthew Gachuk also with like signing 9.5 and going from Canadian like tax to fucking no state tax. Like how sick is that for him? His Dude. Puck brothers got paid this past yeah. year. Plus, like, I mean, you're going to Florida. Like, you're going to Florida. It's gonna be nice weather all the time, and the team's actually fucking good. You're not just going for the weather. And then he's already doing his shit stirring with uh talking yeah. about Tampa Bay, you know, shit talking Tampa Bay already. And it's just like, let's go. And the fact too, now he's in the same division as Brady. Oh god, yeah. let's go! Like, I also love the uh the pictures of the Calgary fans with their Goudreau jerseys, and they're just taping Uber. over the the go the goo and putting the huber <laughs> it's just like i love it man that's good stuff i mean good for calgary though to replace an amazing playmaker with an amazing playmaker i mean the chalk has probably the highest skill set of a lot of players in the nhl like i've like i've said before like i don't think i've ever seen anybody score so many like 
between the league's goals yeah in one year and then be good the fact that he also like hits he's gonna piss off everybody in tampa like they're gonna fucking hate him there so much and they're gonna love him so much in florida like it's gonna be insane i just wonder the big piece that florida is losing to me is like mckenzie weaker was aaron Eckblad's. yeah that's the tough like d partner like who are you filling in there are they gonna go out and get pk suban (laughs) do they even have any cap space right now i don't think so i think they're right up yeah no they're over right now they're almost they're three million over damn yeah yeah, there's plenty of teams that are over the cap right now. So who knows? Yeah, that's rough. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I can say. Like this, why they lost this could potentially lose this trade is just you lose out on a top two defenseman that plays very well with your top defenseman. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that that one's tough. Yeah, sucks. But you know they're gonna be explosive as fuck offensively. That's for sure. How all right? Uh, real quick, how about uh, Matt's Matt's Pacioretty just shit talking, uh, talking Vegas. Yeah. Pile that under the bus <laughs> to see it. Man, I, Vegas just like did a speed run of like one of the most hated teams. <laughs> like, like, oh, cool, exciting new franchise. Oh man, how crazy is it that they went all the way to the final? Oh, like these guys, what the fuck are they doing with their coach? Oh, what the hell? Oh. Yeah, they hate they fucking traded flurry for nothing. No, they're getting rid of patches. What the fuck's going on in Vegas? Yo, fuck Vegas. <laughs> hey, yeah, he just essentially just said that that when he got there, it was weird because there was no accountability. And he's like, I'm not talking about in the team, I'm talking about like ever. You couldn't feel pressure coming off of anyone from the coach, from coaching to management. And he's like, he's just like it was just like weird. Like just everybody at the end of the season, he's like, I had to step in and kind of say, like, hey. We got to be better. Um, you know, typically other Canadian markets, like you got to like, you know, answer for this in Vegas, you're, you're going out, going golfing, going, uh, I think you said like whole foods, buying your organic food and all this kind of stuff. Like he just had nothing good to say about Vegas. And I'm just, I'm glad people are starting to call him out on it. Like fuck Vegas, fuck the way they run their team and all that. Like they just do everybody dirty. Like, man, Feel bad for Vegas fans. You're stuck with that shit. What's gonna happen first? First game back in Vegas. <laughs> See what's gonna happen with patches? They're gonna boom. I think that's probably why I got traded. You know, you spoke up in the locker room, told yeah, <laughs> told everybody they needed a little oh, bit more accountable, and then just you can't be saying that around here. <laughs> and I love your guys' talks conversation about that too. Who's closer to the you know making the playoffs, Buffalo or or Vegas or Eichel? Eichel, yeah. Eichel or Buffalo. And I mean, it's a close one at this point. And, and I was saying, if I think if Buffalo was in the Pacific, they might have a better chance at, at making it next year than uh, Vegas. Yeah, I'm really excited for that Carolina team. I think it's going to be. Yeah. A, I don't think I might. I honestly don't think Buffalo would have a better chance. No. They're, good. They're not good. They're just not good. Um, one thing that's going to be different too is the jerseys that are, the teams are going to be wearing because it was announced that after its next season, the 23 24 season, that mm-hmm. Adidas will no longer be the supplier of jerseys for the NHL, ending the Adidas era. Which, of course, I finally start you know growing on the Adidas style and liking the when, Adidas how long style. it feels like they just got it. It was the the year that the draft was in Chicago, which was 20, uh, where is that? I have... What the fuck did we draw? Was that the Lucas Reichel draft? 2017. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. That's so long ago. It feels like it was not that long ago. Who the fuck did we even draft that year? That was... Oh, Yoko Haru. Yeah, Yoko Haru. That was the Yoko Haru one where he's like, I, I I fell in love with that kid because he goes up on the screen before he puts the hat on. He fixes his hair, looks up, points himself in the jumbotron, puts the hat on, and then put, like big smile, puts his arm around everybody. I was like, that kid, let's go. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so Adidas is just like finished first in the fucking Western Conference. <laughs> yeah. Um, Adidas is so Adidas is out. Uh, would be really yeah. interesting to see who who takes it in. Um. 
I don't, I mean, Reebok won't, won't do it. CCM would be cool. I think Nike, they, they just don't have good templates for their stuff. Like I just, I'm like not a big fan of like their international jerseys and all that. Under Armour. I was saying like, it's going to probably be somebody off the board, like Under Armour, maybe Warrior. <laughs> yeah, like when the, when the NHL had that TV deal with the outdoor network. Outdoor network. <laughs> it's going to be some shit like that. The outdoor network sponsor or supply jerseys. And Netflix. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon hockey. Amazon, yeah, dude. It's going to be like Amazon. And they're going to fucking outsource it to like some Indian company and the jerseys going to fall apart on the ice. Yeah, I mean, that's a big lawsuit going on too with uh, with Adidas. I don't know if it's a, with Adidas or what, but they're basically saying that all, you know, it is Adidas because they're saying that all oh, authentic jerseys are being listed as authentic when they're not because authentic jerseys are made in Canada and they're selling made in Indonesia jerseys as oh, really? authentic. Yeah. So there's like a huge lawsuit against it. Yeah. That's not authentic. Yeah. So, um, all right, we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, so there's a random topic that came up in our group chat with bar down, bar down posted like, you know, team, uh, North America rosters from uh, back in 2016 and just how stacked that team was. Uh, so we kind of were, were talking a little bit about it. First off, we were literally like, well, what's the salary cap on that team now? <laughs> um, so the forwards come in at 90, just over $91.5 million. Uh, defense, uh, $35.5 million. And goalies, just under $19 million. So yeah, that was that was when McKinnon, Matthews, and <laughs> McDavid were all on the same team. Dude, like, that's it was like, unreal the team. Like real quick, the forwards, yeah, Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, uh, McKinnon, uh, Goudreau, Eichel, Larkin, uh, Drorin, Druin, Dorian, Druin <laughs> Nugent Hopkins, Shifley, uh, Trocheck, uh, Couturier, and JT Miller. Then at defense, you had Ekblad, Morgan Riley, Ryan Murray, who was the uh, the random guy, uh, Seth yeah. Jones, Gossespierre, Pareko, with Bucky, uh, Gibson, and Murray at goal. So, I mean, that team was fucking good, and it just sucks because the, – The extras on that team, too, were Brandon Saad and Jacob Truba. That's <laughs> insane. Unbelievable. And they were saying that the, the, the World Cup of Hockey is coming back, but they also said, unfortunately, like they're not going to do a Team North America and Team Europe this time around. So we will not see that again. But we are going to do a quick little starting lineup draft. And if they were coming back with Team North America, who would we would take for our starting lineup? You were sitting really still there for a second. I thought you froze. <laughs> oh, no. I was just listening. <laughs> I was like, shit, we're almost done, too. So that's hilarious. We haven't done this in a minute. So basically, what we're gonna do three forwards, two D, one goalie. Um, we can be really specific about position, or you can just say straight up forwards, defenseman, goalie. I think I'm going that route. I think you go more specific with it. Yes. Um, I will let you have first overall pick, you know, that will be my gift to you. First overall. Oh shit. Okay, what do I want to do? I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go D. Going Kale McCarr. That's uh, yeah. That is the right call. Um, I'm going <laughs> to go forward and take Jack Hughes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Zegris. Ah, damn it. Yeah, baby. I'm taking him as a center. As a center, <laughs> I was just about to ask how are you taking him. All right, um, and then I'm going to keep the Hughes dynasty going. I'm taking Quinn Hughes. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go my right winger. I'm going to go Cole, Cole Caulfield. Ah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I got to check my game notes here. Um. I'm gonna stick with center forwards, and I'm gonna take uh, Jason Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. Robertson. Robertson. Yeah, I wrote on the wrong thing. <laughs> Robertson. Um, I got the. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the the goalie, Jake At- Ettinger. Yeah. Ettinger. Ettinger. Yeah. 
All right. Um, let's finish up my forwards, and I'm going to take um Bedard. Bedard. Oh yeah. Fuck. A little future. Uh, he wouldn't even be qualified for this one. What was it? Oh, it was just under 23, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was uh if it it would have been players drafted this year. All right, you dick. All right. Um <laughs> Because it was when Austin Matthews was just drafted. He hadn't even played a game in the NHL yet. Okay, but he was all right. First Fair, overall. Fine, fine. Um, I'm going to finish up my D then, and I'm going to go with Adam Fox. I knew you would. Perfect. That's, I knew I wasn't take, worried about. Were you going to take Byron? Uh, no. No. Right. Okay. Going, I, I, I'm going to just take my left wing. I'm going to go with uh, Brady Kachuk. You, ah, oh, I knew I should. <laughs> I thought he was going to still be up there. Damn it. Nah. You, well, you took two of the players on my first line. I took my whole second line, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Then I will, I got to finish a forward and a defenseman. No, you don't. Um, you have right, two holy, defense already. Holy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Spencer Knight. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, and then my last pick is uh, Jacob Chikrin. He's still that young? Yeah, he's like 23. Jesus. Good, good pick. Yeah. Um, all yeah. right, then. I'm just going to go for shits and giggles here and take... Um... Oh, he's 24. Oh, maybe he wouldn't be eligible. Nah, he no, wouldn't he, be eligible. He, no, no, no. He might have just turned 24. Uh, March 31st. He just turned 24, so he All would have right. been eligible. Okay. Um, He was 23 during the season this year, so that's why. Fuck. Uh, okay, I'm just going to take uh, Kirby Doc. Oh, okay. <sighs> Lots of good players left on the board. Yeah. So, all right, real quick, go through some of the guys, your other, because you built an entire team. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Oliver Wallstrom, who I talked about earlier, uh, Alexi Lafreniere. Yeah, that's uh, who I was going between, him and Kirby. Robert Robert Thomas, uh, Kyler Yamamoto, Brandon Hagel, Nick Suzuki, Owen Tippett, even Taylor Radish, Pierre-Luc Dubois, but even guys that were just drafted, like Shane Wright, Logan Cooley, um Owen Power, get him up there. Owen, I have Owen Power on my list yeah. as one of my players. Uh Keandre Miller, who I actually really like. I, I, I had, had him, him written down too. I just Adam Fox was still there. I had to take him. Uh Maddie Bernier or Benier Beniers. Um Turcot. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be fucking cool too. Uh what'd you say? Turcot? Yeah. Eh, maybe in a few years. Jeremy Swayman as another goalie. Uh yeah, shit like that. Let's see, was there anything else that? Um, Clayton Keller is still eligible. That's insane <laughs> to me. Yeah, did I say Nick Suzuki? Yeah, I think so. Um, who else would have been available? Fuck, I know, now you're reading all these guys. I kind of want to go back and remove Kirby, but I'm sticking with it. Uh, Dylan Cousins. I had Dylan Cousins listed here. Jamie Drysdale. Um, who else? There was another one that I wanted to mention before. Who's it got Winnipeg? Did you say him already? Um, Peyton Krebs in Winnipeg, yeah, Pierre, Pierre Luc Dubois, no, Cole, what? um, uh, Sillinger, no, there's a P, I think. Oh, Perfetti, Perfetti, yeah, eh, I don't know. There's a lot of good young guys that like have. Could have made it. Could have made. Could have made the squad. Oh. But yeah, it's it, there's just so many good young players. It's insane. Who else? So moral of the story is North American hockey is going to be good for a long time. Jake Sanderson. <laughs> just gonna keep naming people from like the more recent drafts. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap this up here. Um, that was episode 186. Tanner, what do you want to call it? Ooh, um, ooh, uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> talked about Taves. We talked about what we're looking for forward to. We talked about some of the still pending free agents. I don't. I don't even know, man. There's like, well, it's just, it's like summer, man. It's just summer. It's just <laughs> summer. That's perfect. <laughs> It's just that's summer. Summer. All it's right. So that's episode 186. It's just summer. It's just summer. Uh, make sure yeah. to follow us on social media at, at WCB Podcast. Uh, follow us on Spotify. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Five star reviews on both. Um, or not on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, yeah, we put poll questions on Spotify every week, each episode. So go check that out and answer the poll question. Uh, do you have a question you want to ask this time? No. Okay. Um, so <laughs> for Tanner and Jerem, we will uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Also, shout out to the guy on the Hawks subreddit user for the Benmo who's already got a Frank Nazar Hawks jersey. <laughs> Sick. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Love you, boys. Bye. The Windy City Benders Podcast. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And follow the boys on socials at WCB Podcast.